checks that while human error is not fatal, I would expect that there are checks and balances within the process that if someone makes a mistake, it would be caught somewhere later down before it is actually brought to the parliament, tabled, voted and passed by the parliament. Bless up, bless up my people. Welcome back to the channel. It's a girl and Isabel Rose. Thanks for all the new subscribers. Thanks for returning subscribers. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Turn the post notification bell on. Put it on all so you won't miss an upload from me. On the road to 20k, help me to get there, my people. So in this one, my people, seeing where parliamentarians spar yesterday in the House of Parliament as it pertains to some gross error as it pertains to the budget debate where the Minister of Finance, Dr. Nigel Clark, had, you know, read out that four hour long, you know, budget. And so he wasn't present in Parliament yesterday and the corrections were made um, by Minister of Education, Faval Williams. I'm a people. Everal Warmington, you know, hammers you know, with question to Faval Williams. And I've seen a lot of persons saying that, you know, he might try and mash up Parliament before him leave. But my take before I make one to watch the entire video, my people, I want to watch all light so I can get, you know, a better understanding of what went down. And I believe it's him holding them accountable in this regard and not trying to mash up Parliament, as some would say. You know, many seem as the one that you know holds nothing down many seem as the one that is very straightforward rude at um many times but in this regard i see it as holding even his own members accountable Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance and the Public Service, I now move for the suspension of the standing orders to enable me, on his behalf, to introduce and have read a first time a bill shortly entitled the Appropriation Amendment Act 2024. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance and the Public Service, I now move that a bill shortly entitled the Appropriation Amendment Act 2024 be read a first time. A bill shortly entitled the Appropriation Amendment Act 2024 read a first time. Mr. Speaker, I now move for the suspension of the standing orders to enable me to take the motion, notice of which I gave earlier. Mr. Speaker, the purpose of the amendments to the Appropriation Act 2024 is to exclude the amounts related to statutory expenditures that were inadvertently included in the Act. These amounts are shown in Table 1, which accompanies this brief, which represents a summary of the 2024-2025 central government expenditure budget as amended and approved by the Standing Finance Committee in March 2024. Mr. Speaker, the amendments are necessary as the Constitution stipulates that statutory expenditures shall not be voted on by the House of Representatives. Mr. Speaker, statutory expenditures are expenditures that are charged on the consolidated fund or on the general revenues and assets of Jamaica by virtue of provision in the Constitution or by virtue of the provisions of any other law in force. Mr. Speaker, the amendments are to enable compliance with Section 116.3 of the Constitution, which indicates that that amount classified as statutory expenditure in the estimates of expenditures shall not be voted on by the House of Representatives and should therefore not be included in the Appropriation Act. Mr. Speaker, the amendments to the Appropriation Act 2024 do not affect the heads of estimates which do not include provisions for statutory expenditures neither do the amendments affect the aggregate 2024-2025 central government expenditure estimates 
of $1.341 trillion. So in effect, Mr. Speaker, um, in the estimates of expenditure, the yellow book, all those numbers are correct. Mr. Speaker, the sections of the act to be amended are, one, section two to be amended to reflect the current aggregate voted sum excluding statutory expenditures of $817,265,242,000 instead of $849,896,471,000. Column two of the schedule in relation to the affected heads of expenditure to be amended by replacing the figures on the sums granted which include statutory expenditures with the sums excluding statutory expenditures which are to be voted by Parliament and included in the Appropriation Act. Mr. Speaker, the affected heads of estimates and the, sum, and the sums involved are as follows. So on the heads, His Excellency the Governor General and staff, the sum in the Appropriation Act 2024, including statutory provisions, was 532,852,000. The amended sum, excluding statutory provisions, is 149,664,000. This is of Parliament, 2,439,963,000. The amended sum is 2 billion 413 213 million 290,000. Office of the Public Defender 394 million 357,000. The amended sum is 367 million 106,000. Office of the Auditor General 1,404,352,000. The amended sum is 1,380,839,000. Office of the Services Commissions, 518,977,000. The amended sum is 500,354,000. Office of the Children's Advocate, 386, 386 million, 665, the amended sum is 359,172,000. Independent Commission of Investigations, 837,299,000. The amended sum is 809,134,000. Integrity Commission, 1,851,371,000. The amended sum is 1,812,000. 1,771,000. Independent Fiscal Commission, 273,482,000. The amended sum is 257,690,000. 000, 257,690,000. Pensions, 44 billion. The amended sum is 13,856,376,000. Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, 820,874,000. The amended sum is 799,804,000. And finally, the judiciary, 9,431,721,000. The amended sum is 7,554,474,000. Mr. Speaker, with the exclusion of the sums classified as statutory expenditure, the subtotals reference as carried forward and brought forward in column two at the bottom of the appropriation bill and at the, at the, the bottom and the top of each page of the schedule are to be amended as follows. So if we look at page three, we would be deleting the figure, 45,868,243 carried forward and replacing it with the figure, 45,278,965,000. Page four, deleting the figure, 
45,868,253,000 brought forward on page four and replacing with the figure 45,278,965,000. On page four, deleting the figure 323,464,000, I'm sorry, um, 323,464,312,000 carried forward on page four and replacing with the figure 292,731,400,000. Page five, deleting the figure 323,464,312,000 brought forward and replacing with the figure 292,731,400,000. Page six. Okay. Page six, deleting the figure 454,238,039,000 brought forward and replacing it with the figure 421 billion, 606 million, 810,000. Page six, deleting the figure 799 billion, 34 million, 682,000 carried forward and replacing with the figure 766 billion, 403 million, 453,000. Page seven, deleting the figure 799 billion, 34 million, 682,000 brought forward and replacing with the figure 766 billion 403 million 53,000. The total figure on page seven representing total sum granted is to be amended by deleting the figure 849 billion 896 million 471,000 and replacing with the figure 817 billion 265 million 242,000. Mr. Speaker, it's quite unprecedented that less than two weeks after the close of our budget debate, we would be called back to address a matter of this nature. I want to ask what has given rise to the errors that were made in including the public bodies and the other entities. And I ask within the context that these are technocrats who have been preparing budgets for many, many years. And from my recollection, I can't recall ever having a situation like this. And I ask also within the context that while human error is not fatal, I would expect that there are checks and balances within the process that if someone makes a mistake it would be caught somewhere later down before it is actually brought to the parliament tabled voted and passed by the parliament and secondly i want to ask what is the material effect of the error that has taken place and whether it has affected the warrants that are issued to these public bodies and agencies and whether that has in any way impacted their ability to execute their functions, pay their bills, honor the obligations that they have. Um, you want to answer the now? At the same time, Mr. Speaker. Was this expenditure reviewed by the um, Auditor General. I believe that she normally goes through, or the Parliament goes through this and sent a report back to Parliament approving or making a recommendation. The question is, was this done by the Auditor General? And it was, if, whether, if it was done by the Auditor General, as done in all other cases, how come she didn't pick this up and send it back to Parliament? The appropriate person to have found this is the other general. Is the other general? So the issue is, was she sleeping on the job? Or what? That she didn't find this when she approved this bit of expenditure that came back here. 
Minister. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In responding to the questions from the member, um, member, if you look in the yellow book, it will be clear that it was an error in transposing figures from um, the table one that I gave you into the Appropriations Act. Um, the fact that it was discover discovered uh, quickly, and we're here to correct that. I, you know, I applaud that um, because sometimes when errors are made, uh, um, persons don't step forward to say this is an error that was made. So this was, um, this was just an error in, in copying a set of numbers into the Appropriations Act. Hold, hold on, there is a... Madam Minister. The second part of the question, the impact, while well, having corrected, having, once we're done with this process, then it will enable the warrants to begin to go out. Mr. Speaker, the second part of my question has not yet been answered. Was the estimate of expenditure reviewed by the Auditor General and so approved and certified? That's my the second part of my question, but that part has not been answered as yet. Minister. Mr. Speaker, the corrections are sent to the House by the Minister of Finance and the Public Service. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. With all, with all due respect, I ask a question, and I, the minister who is tabling this should answer without being probed by anybody else on advice. It's a simple question I've asked. It's a simple question. She does not need advisors on this. Okay? It's customary for the Auditor General to go through the estimate of expenditure and send approval. Certification. The question I'm asking. Was that done by the Auditor General? If not, why? We broke the we have, we have broken precedent. Minister. All right. Um, Mr. Speaker, I'm advised that the Appropriation Act is not reviewed by the Auditor General. The Auditor General does not review the estimates. Thank you. Oh, mem member, member, member. Member, mem member, member, I will give you your time, but the, the member, the other member was before you. I, I want to follow up on the second part of my question, and I ask about the impact of the warrants. We are at the 9th of April, and I assume now having the correction, and we'll go through the process of passing it. My question remains. What impact will this have? Because without warrants, they can't spend. They may have obligations. Um, salaries would be due in another week and a half. What impact will this have on any of the agencies that are affected by the error? Minister. Mr. Speaker, once we get through passing the appropriations, uh, the amendment to the Appropriations Act this afternoon, it will enable the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service to issue warrants to continue the work of the government. Um, Mr. Mr. Speaker, the, the, minister, the minister simply repeated the answer given before, which is not, in, is not a responsive answer to the question asked. My question is, my, I will ask the question in a different way. Can the minister assure the parliament that there is no adverse implication from this amendment or any liabilities arising therefrom? Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There is no adverse impact on the affairs of the government from doing this. Thank you.
Mr. Speaker, the point I was getting at is after the estimate expenses table in this house, you cannot proceed with the debate of the budget until we get a certification from the, or a response, or review from the, the, George, shut your mouth. George Hilton, leave me alone. I am saying here, Mr. Speaker. All right, all right. I am saying. Stop. All right, I withdraw it. Okay. I withdraw it. I am saying, Mr. Speaker, the point is. Wait, man. That after the budget is laid in the South, you cannot commence the, the, the budget debate until after review of the Auditor General. That's what I was getting at, Mr. Speaker. That's all I was getting at. And so while I do agree with um, Julian Robinson as it pertains to saying that, you know, human error is going to happen. But my take on that part is that before you come out and read figures shouldn't there be other personnels to double check and triple check and make sure that it's accurate to the t or should i say accurate to the e and so we all would like to know if there is if there will be any serious implication knowing that you know pay adjusted pay is supposed to go out by the ending of april and so we're seeing that they're passing this amendment bill as it pertains to the errors in the budget that Nigel has read out. I want to talk about my people based on everything that I want to hear in this video and based on what I might understand that there were errors. Talk up and let me know what I want to think. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Run go over to my other platform, Instagram and Facebook and follow me over there at Anisabel Rose. Check out the YouTube store maker purchase. It goes in support of the channel. Check out the YouTube membership. You get a lot of benefits by becoming a member. Only a small fee per month to become a member of the ABR movement. And you have two levels of membership. You have the regular membership and you have the VIP membership. We do notification shout out in each and every video to be a part of that. All you have to do is be the first to like, comment and subscribe and you'll be featured in the following video to come. This notification shout out goes to Thelma. Big up yourself, Thelma. Thanks for the continued support from each and every subscriber. New viewers, come on board, journey with me, join the family. Subscribe to the channel, like up the video, share out the videos, support the ABR movement by playing your part. On the road to 20K, help me to get there, my people. Stay tuned for more videos, stay tuned for more updates. Get this video to at least 3,000 likes. Big up on yourself.